Hi friends, my name is Mark Chitwood. I'm the senior pastor at Stonebridge Christian Church, and we are so glad that you're with us today online. Whether you're worshiping with us in Omaha, or in the state of Nebraska, or throughout the United States, or all over the world, we are grateful that you decided to join us for church today. Here on our online campus today, you will experience great music, practical teaching from the Bible, a chance to give and to have communion with us as a family. With everything going on in our world today, we just thought it would be best for us to meet together this way. Not out of a sense of fear, but really a sense of love and responsibility for our community. What we have realized is the church is not a building, it's people. And our people make the difference here at Stonebridge. Our hope today is that this experience will be more than just watching a video, but you'll be able to connect with some of our online hosts and have your questions answered and just connect as a church family. Stonebridge is a great place to explore your faith, meet some new friends, and to make a positive difference in our community. We are believing that today that this service will bring you hope and some help wherever you're at. Now enjoy the broadcast. We are so glad that you are here, whether you are in a physical campus at Omaha or Millard or Benson or Fremont, welcome, or maybe you're joining us online at our online campus. Again, we are so glad that you are here. We are in the middle of a new message series called A New Normal, and man, it has been both encouraging and challenging. Um, so good to just learn how to be a little bit more like Jesus in this season it's been so good for me, and I hope it has been for you too. This week we are talking about telling the truth, learning a little bit about what Jesus says about truth telling. Um, well, it's Father's Day. You and I are both dads. Yes, we are. Um, love nothing more than a good dad joke. Oh, they're so my favorite. Now is the time. You have permission to get your phone out, check the Instagram, find a great dad joke, tell someone next to you, or drop it in the chat. Uh, let's vote on the best dad joke here this morning. I got All one right. for you. Hit me. I'm ready. All right. What do you call... Uh, a belt full of a hundred dollar bills. I have no idea. A waste of money. <laughs> waste. Get it? Waste? Yeah, That's waste. Good. That's yeah, good. That's yeah, yeah. good. Okay, yeah. man, you had yours memorized. All right. I got one for you, though. All right, hit me. What do you call two monkeys who share an Amazon account? I don't know. Prime mates. Prime mates. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you did there. Oh, it's gold. Hey, let us know. Best dad joke you got. Drop it. Share it with your friends. Share it here in the chat. So glad you're here with us. Yeah. Hey, uh, my name's Alex, by the way. This is Eric, and uh, we're thankful you're joining us, whether it's online or in a campus. And this month, we're having a month of care and celebration mm -hmm. here at the church. It's been good. Uh, it has been so great. This last week, we celebrated healthcare workers, mm -hmm. which they've been at the front lines of this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you for how you've been working and doing so many great things Thank to you. help people. Uh, we did just a small little token of appreciation last week. We had like a Starbucks digital gift card, and we said, hey, people can like donate money for healthcare workers to get a free drink. We had so many people donate and be a part of that. Thank you for joining us. Another way you can help and serve during this month of care and celebration, mm -hmm. we're having a blood drive at all of our campuses June 26th and June 29th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., you can sign up online, go to our website. It's really easy, really simple. And a little bonus thing they're doing. First of all, you get to help people. Uh, Life-saving Very help. important. Yeah, donating blood. Second of all, a great reason to sign up. You can find out Red Cross is now testing for COVID-19 antibodies. Double so bonus. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah, big time. So, that's hey, great. get signed up for that. And this weekend, there's so many things going on. It's amazing. That's awesome. We're celebrating Father's Day. Uh $50 Shields gift card giveaway. You can go to any of our Facebook groups. You can get signed up, register for that. Just sign up a dad in your life. Uh, nominate whoever you can think of that's a great dad uh, to be able to win this prize. I, I don't think we're eligible. We work here. I, I um, wish. I mean, I'd take that gift card. Yeah, it'd be a great prize. Maybe we can find a different church and we can sign up for yeah, their we'll, prize we'll do that. that they're doing for Father's we'll Day scour. weekend. <laughs> All right, you ready? Joke joke round number two. All right. All right, I got one for you, man. You're not even ready for this I'm one. Not, okay? I'm not. A man tried to sell me a coffin today. I said, that's the last thing I need. <laughs> the last, like, that's, yeah, I get The it. very I last. Get it. Yeah. I get it. I, that's, that's, that's good. Wow. Okay. I mean, you get it, but I mean, you don't. Really All right, I got one. I got one. <laughs> well, you know. 
can't tell a lie. So. <laughs> wow, that's um, good. That's way to tie it into the message. Yeah, yeah. All right, I got one for you. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been starting to write this new book about falling down the stairs. Yeah. yeah. It's a one step at a time. Yeah. <laughs> step by step book. I don't want to laugh, but that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, well played, uh, Eric. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, drop drop your favorite dad joke in the chat. Oh, man. Um, hey, we got some more cool things coming up. Um, we have a This is Stonebridge class happening June 24th at 630 across all of our campuses. Man, it's just a great way to connect, to take a next great step. Class. And we want to get to know you. And we also just want to tell you a little bit about who we are at Stonebridge and what we do and how we connect with our community uh, and what we do to just draw closer to Jesus. So. Uh, if you would like to register for that, you can find that link in the chat or at our website under the Connect tab. So we hope you do that. Yeah. Man, I still got some tears in my eyes from your joke, actually. <laughs> that, was that was really good. good. Hey, we care about you guys, and we care about your kids, your families. Yeah. Uh, this next week, starting June 22nd on Monday, we're having a virtual spirit week for families. It's going to be a great opportunity where... Every day there's going to be some activities to do, some crafts, different snack ideas. Our Kidman team has been working around the clock to get ready for this. It's going to be a fun experience. Go on, check out our website, check out the app. You can find all the information there. But hey, right now, we're about to start worship. Hey, we'll catch you right here afterwards. See you then. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Stonebridge. Uh, if you're joining us on our online campus, we're here in the room. We're glad you're with us. Come on, let's join together and worship and sing together. Come on, sing it out. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. How his love overcomes, he has done great things, he has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We Yes and amen You will do great things God, you do great things Oh, hero of heaven You conquered the grave You free every captive And break every chain Oh, God, you have done great things We dance in your freedom
I search the world And it couldn't fill me
Amen. You can have a seat in the room or at home. So thinking about fathers this weekend, man, I was thinking about how dads so often, they want the best for their kids, right? So a lot of times they'll set really high expectations. And my dad, he's a pastor. He does a lot of things really well. So when I was growing up, I thought, I don't know if I can measure up to that. And so when people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, anything but a pastor. Um, God had other plans. And our Heavenly Father, He has His own set of high expectations for us. He is holy. He is perfect. We just sang, He is perfect in all of His ways. And so I think for us, if we're honest, we can look at that and think, man, I'm not good enough. I do not measure up to that. But God knew that. And so He does this incredible thing. He sends us grace in the form of Jesus. And so Jesus comes to earth, and Jesus lays His life down. He lays his life down on the cross so that our lives could be lifted up. Oh, so now when, when God sees me, when God sees you, he is no longer seeing the sin. He is no longer seeing the imperfections. He is seeing the perfect love that Jesus displayed as he was sacrificing himself on our behalf, taking the payment for our sins and our imperfections. Oh, he is perfect in all of his ways. And so now each week, we want to take time to remember. We remember the body that was broken and the blood that was shed. And that is represented in the cup and in the bread that we take. So if you came in the room, I hope you grab the communion elements. If you have something at home, I encourage you to get that now. And uh, take this time as we sing this song to reflect and remember on the grace that God gives us and the perfect love of a good father. God, thank you that you are perfect. Lord, but you knew we would never be. So you gave us Jesus. God, help us to focus on him right now and let everything else fall away. Amen. Every heart leans in. 
Will you pray with me? Oh, God, we need you now more than ever, it seems. God, I pray that you will help us to prioritize you at the top and help us know, God, what needs to be removed in our lives. I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you are in the room or if you are online, we want to welcome you. And if you are new, thanks so much for joining us this week. Uh, I would encourage you to fill out the new here form that is in the chat, or you can fill that out in the lobby. Um, and you might be thinking, what are they going to do with my information? Well, for starters, we are going to give you a free Starbucks gift card, which is a pretty good deal. And uh, we just want to connect with you. We love to connect with people. We want to walk alongside you in this crazy season of life. So please do that. But thank you so much for joining us this week. Well, fathers in the room, fathers online, happy Father's Day. Uh, it is an exciting time. We want to celebrate with you. So this is cool. We are offering a... $50 Shields gift card. That's right. And, and dads, you might be thinking, how do I get this? You need to tell all of your family, all of your friends that they need to nominate you in one of our Facebook groups. So every campus has its own Facebook group. You can find that, nominate your dad there. Or in the chat, you can check out uh, a link there where you can find out where you can nominate a dad. Um, and, and let's face it, dads, we need that extra one more uh, tackle box. We need more lures. We need that extra set of golf balls that we're going to lose this weekend. Or we, need, we need fudge. Do they have fudge at Shields? I don't know. Um, but in any case, dads are going to love this. So be sure that you nominate your dad for this Shields gift card. Uh, it's a way that we can bless them and celebrate them. We're going to draw names on Monday for that. Um, and, and as a church, we just love being generous. We love uh, the generosity of people that come together and we pool what God has given us and we use it to bring him glory. And so uh, as a part of our worship, we say, God, this is what we have. How can you use this? And so there's a lot of ways that you can, you can join with us in this. You can partner with us. You can give online. You can uh, give in the app. You can give in the chat. There's going to be a link there. And if you're in the room, there's boxes in the back that you can give there as well. There's so many good things happening, and it is such a privilege and a blessing to be able to come together and expand the kingdom of God using the resources that we've been given. It's a way that we can worship. And, and, and so this, this week, um, as, as you go about your day, uh, think about the ways that God has blessed you and how you can use that. One of the things that happened recently that I love was this baptism class that, that took place where people from Wisconsin came, actually. Uh, the Badger State, believe it or not, we love people in Wisconsin too, here in Nebraska. Um, but they came and they want to know what the next step is for their baptism. And there's going to be a baptism that's going to be happening in Benson this weekend, which I love. And so when you partner with us, um, you are partnering towards life change that is happening. But right now, I am so excited to continue this message series. Mark has done a phenomenal job in this new normal. Every week, it's like, man, I am so challenged. I am so convicted. I am so encouraged. And I hope you are as well. So let's uh, take a moment. Let's uh, share notes. Let's uh, compare what we are hearing from Mark as he shares with us. Let's take a look at this together. Everybody, thank you so much for being here. Uh, you may not know this about me, but I have always liked art. And I grew up in a home where art was somewhat important to us. My mom is a phenomenal artist. She knows how to draw and paint and make things happen on canvas. And I've always marveled that at her. I, I uh, started off pretty good, I think, with crayons. I was really good at the inline, keeping it in the, 
in, in the lines, you know, I did really well with that, but I wasn't very creative with colors. I remember brown and black were my uh, colors of choice. It must have been a dark season for me uh, as a five-year-old. I don't know. I, but I, I do, I specifically remember, like, man, I used a lot, you know. <laughs> then, uh, then I moved into uh, grade school where they had art projects, and you could do art projects, and, and I was terrible at that. I was not good at all. I couldn't draw very well. I, I, I couldn't make a happy little tree if my life depended on it. And still to this day, if you ask me to draw a, a picture of a person, it really is very elementary, like stick figure things. I can't, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, when we had to make stuff out of clay, I was good at snakes and a ball, but that was basically it. And my mom saved some of this stuff. I was like, totally like, why did you save that? Well, doorstop, I guess, or whatever, but really, I, it ne I couldn't get from my head and my heart to my hands very well at all. And I think that's why I like photography a lot, because I do think that I have an eye for things and colors and shapes and patterns all make sense to me. I just couldn't put it on canvas. But capturing it on a camera, I love that. It is really good at that. Now, we also were a very musical family. My dad and mom were very good singers still uh, till this day. I really like listening to uh, their songs. My dad recorded multiple albums and, and traveled the Midwest and did those kind of things. And and we, as a family, sang in church all the time. Special numbers. I don't know why it was special, but we did that. And I love singing today. I really like that. And my, one of my favorite artists growing up was Billy Joel. And still to this day, when Piano Man comes on, it's just like I am in that room, in that bar. It is just right there. He's an incredible storyteller. He also had a song called, uh, called Honesty, and he says uh, this, and which is fascinating. Honesty is such a lonely word. Everyone is so untrue. Honesty is hardly ever heard. It's mostly what I need from you. I would say that's true. It is a lonely word. Proverbs 20, verse 7 says, The godly walk with integrity. Blessed are their children who follow them. On Father's Day, man, there is nothing more special, more, more, more powerful to bless your children with than dads to be an honest person. One of the most frustrating things for kids is broken promises. Yeah, we'll go, we'll do, I'll, I'll be there. And when that gets shattered, it does something to a little kid's heart and soul. And they begin to wonder, I don't think I can trust him. I don't think that that's real. I don't think he's going to show. And all of a sudden, we begin to realize that the, our little hearts have grown calloused to that conversation because we know, uh, no, he doesn't mean what he says. But what a blessing it is to have a dad who keeps his promises. I think we'd all agree with that. We would love to grow up in a home where, where honesty is the norm, where truth-telling is honored and rewarded. Unfortunately, we grow up in homes more like uh, what is featured on Jerry Springer. I don't know if you've had a chance to catch up on Jerry Springer during the corona stuff, but I've watched a few shows lately. It's fascinating. And you can, you can Google stuff. I, again, parents, don't do this with your children in the room. That would be a horrible way to parent. But it is a fun way after they go to bed to be able to pass some time. Uh, in fact, uh, readers, uh, uh, I think somebody, I don't know, uh, TV Guide says it was the worst television show in the history of the world. And it truly, truly is. There was a episode where there was... Uh, a woman surrounded by five men, and the caption read, she has had an affair with each uh, uh, five of, of, of her husband's brothers. That was the caption. And they went into the audience, and they said, well, what do you think about this? And one guy says, well, if, if, if she's cool about it, and he's cool about it, and they're cool about it, why not? And everybody applauded. As if this is what it's about, right? And we, absolutely crazy. It's hard to know, right? What is right and wrong? 80% of high school students don't believe that there's an absolute right or wrong. 
1966, a professor wrote a book called Situation Ethics. Joseph Fletcher's premise was that uh, the, that is uni- there's no such thing as universally good or bad. There's no, th- no such thing as necessarily right or wrong. There's no absolutes. Morals are determined by the situation. An act that is right in one situation it, it might be wrong in another situation. I had a student one time say to me, well, Mark, that's wrong for you, but it's not wrong for me. I'm like, what? Um, what are you talking about? Well, when you talk about these things, right, that, uh, from the Bible, I know you, I know you, it's, 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 you know, you get, it's for you, that makes sense, but for me, no, I don't live that way. With all these things that we've been looking at over the last three weekends now, uh, hating someone in race, some people might say, well, that's, that's, that's okay for you, but it's not okay for me, right? There, I mean, there's sometimes when it's justified to hate people. What? There's sometimes it's okay to lust after somebody else. It's, it just depends on the situation that I'm in. There's times when it's good to tell the truth, and then there's sometimes when it's bad to tell the truth. Now, those things aren't going to go away. Racism is not going to go away, and uh, truth telling. That, you know, and, and lust, all that stuff is not going to go away. But what Jesus is saying to us is that we're going to try our very best to eradicate that in the kingdom of God. This is our new normal. We're not going to live by that old standard, that old way of living. This is how we're going to do this stuff. Romans 8, 29 says, For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son. Oh, here's the purpose, Right? so that the son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like Jesus. So we've said this over and over again the last couple weekends. I'm going to say it again. Followers of Jesus follow Jesus. I know. It, it, it makes sense, except what? Followers of Jesus follow Jesus. Not just his, not just listening to him and following him around, but we're actually going to do what he said we need to do. So here we go. He is calling us into a new life. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 33. Once again, you have also heard that our ancestors were told, you must not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. But I say, do not make any vows. Do not say by heaven or because, uh, because of heaven is God's throne, or do not say by earth, because the earth is his footstool. And do not say by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say by my head, for you can't turn one hair white or black. Just simply say, yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. Now, for you and I, it's like what they were doing we're making vows. I promise, right? I'm, I'm telling you the truth right now. And this is how we would do it today. We would pinky swear. We would pinky swear, right? You ever pinky swear with your friend? We're going to make a vow and we're going to class pinkies. And that means I'm telling the truth. I will always tell the truth. And uh, so help me what? God, right? And that's another vow. So help me God. In fact, we place our hand on the Bible, right? Because we're going to make a vow that I'm going to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me, God. You might be blood brothers. Do you ever do that, blood brothers, where you, you know, some of you don't know what that is, but uh, Mike Geiler knows, a bunch of people know. This is where you prick your finger and your friend picks his, pricks his finger and you stick your blood together. Again, I'm not suggesting this as a as an evening activity or, you know, Sunday school lesson time. But we would do that, and then we are bound to each other to be honest with each other and to protect each other because we now share the same blood. Again, uh, that is just... So we even say these things. I swear by my mother's grave. I swear by it. Or I say, well, uh, uh, I'm I'm going to... Honestly, I'm telling you the truth now. Like, what? You weren't? Now? Okay. And so oaths give a false impression of trustworthiness. Some oaths were considered binding. Others are not. I swear I'm telling you the truth. I promise I'm telling you the truth. All imply that there's times when, unless I say that, I'm really not going to do it. So James tells us in, verse, in chapter 5, verse 12, 
But most of all, brothers and sisters, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just simply say yes or no so that you will not sin and be condemned. We're just going to be honest people. We're going to give honest answers. It's a whole new way of doing things. In the Bible, there's an account of a man named Daniel and uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon who had conquered Jerusalem and taken with him the best and the brightest of the Israelites. Young men without any, in fact, the Bible describes it with young men without any physical defect, handsome, smart. And uh, by the way, Daniel was writing that, so I think that was fascinating, right? (laughs) So they're going to try to get the the leaders of, of Israel to buy into the Babylonian thinking and change the culture of the, of the Hebrew people. We're going to change the culture by changing the leaders and indoctrinating them in our food, our customs, our religion, and our education. And so this is what they did. And they, took the, they took some guys and, the, and they began to indoctrinate them into the culture. And the king enticed them with certain things. Check this out in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to him by the king. He asked the chief of of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Now, God has given the chief of staff both respect and affection for Daniel. But he responded, well, I'm really afraid of my lord, the king, who has ordered you to eat this food and wine. If you become pale and thin compared to the other youths your age, I'm afraid the king will have me beheaded. Daniel spoke with the attendant who had been appointed by the chief of staff to look after Daniel and Haniah and Michelle and Azariah. Please test us for just 10 days on a diet of vegetables and water. Daniel said. At the end of the 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. The attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished. than the young men who had been eating the food assigned to them by the king. Now Daniel could not avoid the king's education or the language or the culture. But he wasn't going to eat the food and the alcohol that had been offered to idols. So he said, I, we're just not going to do this. This is way against my, what I want to do. And he said, I, I, I'm, I'm asking you, in fact, I'm begging you, let us do it this way and see how it works. And after this training was done, he, the king could not find an equal to Daniel or his friends. The king later on would make a decree that no one should pray to any human god or to any god or human except the king of Babylon. It sounded a good like a good idea to the king of Babylon. In fact, I, 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 here's the decree. I'm king, you worship me. You don't worship your gods, you're going to worship me. And that was the decree. But Daniel decided, I'm not going to follow that. I'm going to live my life according to my value system and worship the one true God. And it was his practice, the Hebrew practice was, we're going to pray three times a day, same time, every day, same location, and Daniel did that. Now Daniel could have just shut the curtains or closed the door or do whatever, but he made sure that everybody saw him praying. And people tattled on him, Hey, Daniel's still praying to his God. King, you can't allow this. If you allow this, it's just going to be total chaos. You can't allow Daniel, the leader, uh, the great one, to worship another God. You made a decree. You can't, you, you can't go soft on this guy. Well, the fact that Daniel did this, it was punishable by death. Daniel's to be killed. And we know the stories. Daniel in the lion's den. And sure enough, he's thrown into the lion's den. But God protects him that night. Daniel lives. Now those two things, eating food, praying, is it a big deal? I mean, really, is that a big integrity issue here? I mean, Daniel could have said, oh, we'll just just eat the food, drink the wine, 
It's going to be fine. I'm just not going to pray in public. It's, I'm still going to do it, but I just I don't want really anybody to know. But being God's man was everything to him. Almost every single day, we're not faced with massive decisions. We're faced with little decisions that affect our integrity, especially when it comes to keeping our word. Again, it's the little things that we deal with in life. You go to a restaurant because it's kids eat free night, right? And you're excited about this, and then they, you notice on the kids eat free, it's eight and below. You're like, oh, okay. And so when the server comes and says, you know, uh, hey, we're, you know, it's like, okay, how are you doing? It's like, great, we're here for the kids eat free night. And your nine-year-old understands kind of the, how to count, right? And realizes he's not in the category, but when you say there's two adults and two under eight, he begins to realize, um, oh, there, there might be certain times when it's really okay to lie, like when it saves us five ninety nine. It just might be okay to cash in my integrity for for a, a kid's meal. Keep it quiet. Hey, we're gonna we're, we're not gonna. Or when the cashier hands you back too much money and you notice that, you say, well, what do you do at that moment? Well, if they were better at math, <laughs> it's not my fault they didn't do well in the school. And you pocket the money and it's just a dollar twenty-five, but you cash in your integrity for just a little thing. It wasn't a big deal, right? It was just a little thing. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 18, it says, but the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. And once again, Jesus is cutting into our hearts with a pretty big scalpel here. It's our heart that is in trouble. When we lie, it's our heart that is in trouble. When we break a promise, it's our heart that is causing that. Where does that come from? Well, the Bible says that Satan is a f the father of lies. So every lie that we tell, every little moment we do that, it is just Satan in our hearts working at us. And he will always, he will always get us to, or try to get us to lie. He's always lied, and he will always try to get us to lie. Jesus, on the other hand, Jesus, on the other hand, is truth. In fact, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, what if Jesus was a liar? What if Jesus lied? What if God the Father was a liar? How horrible would it be to worship a God that lies to us? We never know if he's telling us the truth or not. We're not sure about that eternal life thing or not. Like when we get to heaven, uh, and, and it's like we get up there and he goes, oh, golly, you know, uh, I know I told you that, but um, gosh, um, I've got bad news. <laughs> I really can't do that. <laughs> I wish I could, but I can't. So you're out and I'm sorry. I just wanted you to follow me. And that would be horrible, right? We wouldn't know. We would never know. We would never know if he's telling us the truth or not. But Jesus has never lied. He's never broke a promise. But we worship things all the time that lie to us. We worship at the altar of success. Because success says, I promise you happiness. I am promising that you'll be happier. The higher you climb in the ladder, the more, right, you're going to be happier, right? And we believe the lie. We believe that that's going to be true. Like, hey, man, as soon as I get up here, as soon as I get that, as soon as I get this view of that, you know, with the office on the side, the corner, I will be happier. And I don't know how many people I've talked to who have climbed pretty high on the corporate ladder and got incredibly successful. And I've said, Mark, this, this can't be it. This can't, I'm, I'm, 
I'm not any happier now than I was when I was working at the very beginning. In fact, I'd probably say I'm less happy. We worship at the altar of money because we think it promises security. And we know, right, we totally get that right now, that if we worship money, we will always be lied to. First of all, we, we believe that, we'll, that, that money will make me happy. Again, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'd like to think it would, but we've been promised that. And it can, go by, it can go away so quickly. We've learned that during this last three months, right? That, that it, it was there and now it's not. It was, man, my portfolio looked great or my job was, seemed secure and then it's just gone. Like, and now we're worried. We had trusted in something we thought was going to give us security. We worship at the altar of fun because it promises that I won't be bored And it delivers for a little while until the party's over. And then we're like, I'm bored. You ever said that to your parents after they've given you all this Christmas presents? And you sit there for just a little while, and you're like, oh, I'm bored. Like, how can you be bored? We just gave you the PS12 thing. <laughs> like, gosh, play with it, kid. I don't know, it's like, I'm so bored. Again, we worship the things that we think, boy, uh, this is going to be great, and we're certainly bored. But all gods lie to us. All gods lie to us. But Jesus does not. He always tells me the truth. When he makes a promise, he keeps it. And I'm glad. I'm glad he does. It would be horrible, again, to be in a relationship with a God who lies. Again, what if he said, I'll forgive all your sins, and he just doesn't do it. I'll take you to heaven, he just doesn't do it. I'll, I'll be with you, but he just doesn't do it. Remember, again, the pinky square kind of world? You locked pinkies, and you were obligated to this oath of allegiance that you were taking. And maybe you stood in front of a person that says, I, I promise, I promise to love and care comfort, defend, be faithful. Yeah, but I didn't pinky swear. I mean, I said those things, but I didn't pinky swear. I know I told you I'd pay you back, but I didn't pinky swear. I know that I told you I'd help, but I didn't really pinky swear. Uh, that is the old way of doing life, right? That's the old way of doing. Uh, I swear by this oath. Uh, uh, as long as I swear by that oath, uh, I, I'll tell you the truth. But what if Christian men and women. What if we were known by our honesty? What would that look like in the kingdom? Well, I think it'd change everything. In fact, I think people would be so um, intrigued by it, maybe even intoxicated by it, that they'd want to be around it. Like, I want to be around an honest person. I want to do business with an honest person. kept their word. They said, hey, I'm delivering it this day. I'm charging you this much. I'm, I'm, I think people would flock to that. What if for a very moment, just a moment, what if Christians were known for their integrity? Now, Dad, I hope that you'll take this seriously. Your kids are counting on that and they're watching and they need you to be honest with them it's hard right it is truly hard and oftentimes we for just a 5.99 happy meal we cash in our integrity but what after today we just decide you know what I'm I'm, I'm going to be an honest person, that my word is valuable, that integrity matters. My yes is yes, my no is no. All right. Let's pray.
Let's pray. Thank you for never lying to me, for always being truthful, for always being clear. that I can always count on you. Help me to be that kind of dad, husband, friend, boss. And give me the courage to do so. In Christ we pray, amen.
Such a great service. Yeah, I loved that. So glad you joined us. Uh, a lot of things stood out to me. I don't know about you, but you know, I always I love the story of Daniel. Mm-hmm. Uh, anytime I hear about that, it's a great reminder about somebody that just did the little things in life, yeah. just had integrity. Um, I don't know, he just did all the right things, even when no one was looking. Mm-hmm. So I really example. respect and admire that about him. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, for me, like thinking of my own life, um, you know, just little things that I think aren't that big of a deal, like the kids like that are two and under eat free kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I that was kind of convicting for me because I think, oh yeah, how many times, you know, Maverick, he's four, mm-hmm. but he can pass for like three right. or two. Does that count? Yeah, you know, so there's been moments where I've kind of thought, oh, it's not a big deal, you know, yeah. let's get the free lunch or get the cheap movie tickets or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was convicting. Yeah. What about you, man? What stood out? Yeah, yeah, all of that. Um, and then at the very end too there, I just loved what if Christians were known for their integrity? I was thinking, like, what if what if I was known for my integrity? And, man, that is just a challenge um, to me. I don't, I don't know if that's true. I feel like I got a lot of growing to do and to be faithful in those little things, like Daniel's example. And so, oh, man, I just want to take that and think about this that this week and, and how can I um, exude integrity in my life. And so I hope you enjoyed the service also. And, uh, we got several ways to connect from here. We hope you take advantage of those. If you head over to Facebook and join Facebook groups for any of our campuses, uh, both physical as well as online, we've got a Facebook group just for our online community. So head over there, join that, join that community and conversation. Uh, another great way would be the This is Stonebridge class happening June 24th yep. at 6.30. Such great a great class. opportunity yeah. to meet the pastors at each of those campuses, including online. There's an online-only option for that, um, which is super great. So, again, we just hope you enjoyed the service. We love that you were here with us, uh, and we look forward to seeing you back next week. Oh, wait, are we closing it out? Yeah. Wait, okay, I got something before we close it out. Father's Day weekend. I got one more dad joke for you, man. All right, okay. What are the strongest days of the week? Strongest days of the week? I don't know. Saturday and Sunday. The rest are weekdays. Weekdays. Okay. (laughs) They're weak. (laughs) Unfortunately, I get it. Um, well, that seems like, a, seems like a good place to end it. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. Have a great one. Love you guys.